Welcome to Life Mastery Radio with Todd Allen and Jackie Bailey, the show that dives into the science of higher consciousness with inspiring topics such as abundance, intention, health, manifestation, love, and transformation. Join Todd, Jackie, and their guests of leading authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific. Learn to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery. It's all right here with stories and messages to support your well-being and most evocative dreams. Now, here's your hosts, Todd and Jackie. Hey, 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 it's another groovy day, and most of you know that's because I make it that way. When I start my day, I decide it's going to be a groovy day, take off into my day, and it nine times out of 10, 99.9 times out of 10, it turns out to be a groovy day. Now, something might happen, something might change, but I always just think back. I started out with the groovy day i can change this around i might have to stop and just let things be for a little while go walk around the block usually things just work out not usually always things just work out (laughs) welcome to life mastery radio the talk show that brings you great thoughts and ideas for you to use on your very own life mastery journey as always i have my co-host riding shotgun are you riding shotgun jackie I guess so. I'm not sure exactly what that term means, but I guess it goes back to the old west. <laughs> it goes back to stagecoach, right? Stagecoach. There was a guy riding shotgun. He had a shotgun. And he protected, made sure that the robbers didn't get him. So I guess you're not you're riding shotgun. We'll have to figure out another term. Well, I yeah, I shot, I've shot a gun a few times, and I actually frighten myself because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might have to go. Never mind. We're not going to go there. <laughs> How are things at the Speak Feed Lead Project? Really well done. We are uh, zooming right along. We've got some classes starting for some kids next week. We started some classes last week. So zooming along. It's fun to see these kids grow and see them kind of have those aha moments all the time. We've got several groups now that we've been with for, I don't know, two, three years. And so they are doing amazing things and it's, it's really fun. And I wanted to say last, this past weekend, I went to the retreat that uh, Natalie Ekobo, she was a recent guest of ours. She's actually been on the show twice. Yep. Uh, I went to her retreat. Ah, you missed it. It was so awesome. She is an amazing host and what a wonderful guided meditator person she is. I don't know what you call someone like that but she guided us through some amazing meditations visualizing wonderful things individually and as a group yeah. and then I was having a, a little bit of a rough day yesterday and I spent about 30 minutes with her on the phone one-on-one and again she just uplifted me so she's she's wonderful you got to check her out if you haven't already <laughs> check, check you just blow me away because you are you are just on top of it you're doing a lot of things and you know i i gotta think back these are things probably 10 years ago you would have just walked the other way right am i right well you know everything happens for a reason and and i am certain that i would not be where I am and doing what I am today, had there not been challenges that forced me to look at different paths, yeah. different things that I could do. It works. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you're right. It probably wouldn't, because of my past abuse as a child, I never felt like I could connect with kids. And so, you know, some people were going into count, being counselors and some people were going into leading groups and being um, mentors to kids during that time. And I was healing and it just didn't feel comfortable to me. And then when that question came hey could you come teach some kids a public speaking course i went yeah okay i can do that and and that's and that was the first step into forming a nonprofit and helping kids around the world with their their confidence level so it is quite amazing for those that are listening jackie does some amazing work with kids and if you can just imagine a kid opening up and speaking from their heart about what's important to them I couldn't even imagine doing that as a kid, nor nor would I have the insight to be able to do that because as a kid, I can, you know, I can surely say I was just walking around in reactionary mode, right? I just, 
this happened. Oh, this is what I do. This happened. This is what I do. And da, 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 da. and today, I mean, Jackie is training the future president of the United States. I know that for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It is delightful. It's challenging too. I'm I'm seeing that right now, and I'm learning this from other coaches who work with kids, is that it is challenging to get kids motivated to do something right now. Um, there and has I think, to be a reward, right? There's got to be. Well, I don't know if it has to be a reward. I think that the pandemic gave them, you know, some of them a year, some of them a year and a half, some of them two years of just sort of, eh, you know, going around doing what they had to do, but not really reaching yeah. beyond anything like that. And it's, I think it's done a little bit of disservice well, to them because it's hard to get them back into this mode of, I want to be something. I want to be successful at this. I aspire to be something. I'm not hearing that from them right now. So yeah. well, like something. you said before, everything happens for a reason. And I think, I think that the pandemic was a huge wake up call. And, you know, there's a thing called entropy where things have to get kind of shaken up and but when they blossom back out of that, they're well organized. And because of the lessons learned, you know, there's lessons learned and there's right. there's huge direction. So that's that's kind of my belief. But yeah, more news, but we're more, all going to be OK. We're all going to be OK. Right. More news at 11 on that one. I'm <laughs> sure we'll figure that out soon. I want to remind our listeners that today's show page is at www.lifemasteryradio.net or dot or dot com, whichever one you prefer. Type it in; it'll take you there. Any links that we talk about today, the link to our guest, a little brief description of the show is right there. And while you're there, check out Jackie's book. Check out my book. The links are there to Amazon: Six Keys to Life Mastery, and you can see. Jackie's book back there, self-centered leadership. Right here. Ah. There we go. There's my original book. I do have two more out, but I don't have, I have copies of the latest one yet. So. <laughs> He's just on the move. You want to see somebody go? Watch Jackie go. See Jackie go. <laughs> go Jackie go. I'm Jackie. While you're on the website too, you can sign up for the newsletter. Jackie creates a newsletter every week, and it highlights who's been on the show, who's coming on the show, and a blog post about the most recent show. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to review that. And sometimes I scratch my head. I say, where was I during this conversation? How did she get that from that? But it's it's all good. It works. Okay, I think we've I think we've swept that little room and and highlighted the website and i believe jackie this is your guest so guess what da, 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 you get the introduction he is i'm delighted to have joel with us today because he is a prosperity coach who helps others to overcome obstacles standing in the way of their financial freedom in two, in 2021 joel published infinite love and money with molly singh and then in 2019, he had published the nine rules, the nine money rules millionaires use, only the con unconventional ones. Sorry, I'm trying to read and look at them at the same time, which was a bestseller in both self help and personal finance. Joel is an award winning speaker and has led over 20 workshops teaching the concepts of how to overcome limiting beliefs. In 2012, Joel achieved a decades-long dream, which with the launch, launch of his own hedge fund called Salam Salarmore Capital, which is named after his daughters Lauren and Morgan. I probably didn't pronounce that very well. I'm sorry. But we are delighted to have someone not only to talk about money in a financial sense, but also limiting beliefs. On, on a spiritual level. So he's a little bit non-conforming in that whole financial field. <laughs> and we're lucky to have him here today. Welcome, Joel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie. I appreciate you. It's been, it is a real honor to be here today. So thank you, Todd, Jackie, for having me. Yeah, we're, we're inspired. It's not often that we have a guest. That Jackie, Jackie told me before the show, we did the pre-show and she goes, you know, I just got these things about money. And, and so we probably need to do more shows about money, Jackie. Well, I, yeah, I said, when I started to read your book, I was like, oh, I was kind of triggered, triggered a lot because triggered. I have, I have these ingrained limiting beliefs about money. 
And so hopefully you can do a little therapeutic help for me today, Joel. <laughs> well, that's a great way to start because you are a prosperity coach and you probably run into that quite a bit, don't you? Quite a bit. And I'd be more than happy to come back and, and do more uh, therapeutic work. Uh, <laughs> some people have called me the money doctor. So I'll, I'll take that term as well. Uh, so yes, I... I shift people's beliefs around money. And it, it really is amazing because I started this Money Miracles membership a year ago and people come in to the membership because they need help with their mindset mm -hmm. around money. They were taught, we can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's too expensive. At least that's what I was taught growing up. And I think most people are, and that's not serving you. If you continue to have those words from your parents going through your head every time you see something that's maybe not a priority right now for you, you hear the words that's too expensive, then that's not serving you. Because yeah. I tell my clients is $450 trillion of net worth on this earth, $450 trillion of net worth on this earth, okay? There's a lot of abundance. Yeah. In fact, not even talking about money, thinking about air and, and sunlight and the energy that's generated from the sun, which will could propel the earth for many, many years, right? So it's a huge amount of abundance on the earth. Just look at the grass, look at the trees. And yet we say, oh, we can't have enough of that. That's too expensive. Oh, you know, I'm not worthy. All these things that maybe parents or friends or you know peers, cousins, family members said to you growing up that's still resonating in your head. And in fact, I just got off a call with my Money Miracles members and one of the women actually said to me, you know, I was doing well, she just joined the membership in, you know, a few weeks ago. And she said, yeah, I was doing well the first couple of weeks, but what do you do when like that fear comes in and like you want something and then like, oh my God, you start going down this, negative train, negative thought. Well, I use my uh, good friend and mindset expert, Andy Dooley's powerful reframe. Stop, cancel, clear, get the fear out of here. Or you could use the other F word if you want to. But <laughs> I, You know, I taught myself to use control, alt, delete. So I would sit there and, and hit control, alt, delete in my mind twice. And then just give me a couple seconds. To Reboot. <laughs> Reboot. <laughs> Many. Yeah, that, I, I, for, for those old enough to know that, that's how you rebooted your computer. Control <laughs> of sleep twice. You How many times a day computer. did you have to do that? Because the buffers, because <laughs> the buffers got full, right? The buffers got too full. So you had to hit control, delete, restart, and then you could continue on. You know, Joel, let's go off in the weeds just for a minute because while you were speaking, something came to my mind, and that is, and I want to know your thoughts on this. So if we gathered up all the money in the world and redistributed it equally between all, you hear it said that the money would still end up back where it was. Are you a believer in that? Yes, ultimately, in some period of time, maybe it's three years, five years, 10 years, but ultimately I do because the people who have the mindset of you know, the millionaire mindset will figure out ways to generate the abundance. And mm. the people who are telling themselves, I can't afford that, you know, that's too expensive. You know, think about lottery winners. Now, why is it that more than 95% of lottery winners have less money five years after they won the lottery than the day before they won the lottery? And the reason is, and I actually talk about this in, we actually go through a few pages on this in the Nine Money Rules Millionaires Use, my second book, because it's important to understand to have the mindset first before you learn the processes. In that book, I actually talk about my five-step proprietary stock screen. I also give a seven-step real estate screen that you can use to invest in real estate. But I actually start each of those chapters by saying, what do you believe? Do you believe that real estate can make you rich? If you don't, don't read this chapter because it doesn't matter 
the process I give you. What will happen is you may use the process to lose money. Or one guy came to me who I actually, he won my book a couple of years ago when I was presenting to, you know, a group online and he won the book and he wrote me a letter back saying the stock market's rigged. I would never put a dollar in the stock market. Be, and it makes like, and it, the second point makes sense because it makes sense not to put any money in the stock market because he believes it's rigged and he'll lose his money there. Mm. So first you got to change the mindset to say, no, the stock market's not rigged. I became famously rich in 2008 and nine because of it. And I know a lot of friends and hedge fund managers who have made a ton of money in the stock market. It's not rigged. They've analyze the companies, they've done the homework, and they figured out which companies are going to be worth more and a lot more in a few years. Right. So yeah. what's your mindset? And what's your belief? And so yes, you know, I, I, I do to answer your question, believe that that redistri redistribution of wealth will happen over a period of time because of the millionaire mindset and the example from the lottery winners the lottery winners don't have the millionaire mindset. So what happens is they get the money and they don't realize that to be financially free, for most people, it's a million dollars. You know, that's generating six to nine percent income, you know, over a year. That's 60 to 90,000 a year. That's, you know, say five to seven thousand a month. That's usually most people's expenses around there. Yeah. But what happens is they the lottery winner will mil, win a million dollars and then start spending it, yeah. and and, it holds and in the bucket. right, and so there's no retention and there's no investment of the million dollars, and so that's generally what happens. So well, yeah, you learned this lesson early, so we'll we'll get a little bit of the back your backstory, because when you were um, in your late teens. You know, I think the story goes, you went to your dad and you wanted to go to a school and he said he couldn't afford that school. And you said, oh, yeah, watch me. And you <laughs> took off and took care of that. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, so my dad said to me, probably when I was 13, 14, 15, we can't afford a private college. And I said, well, what would it take? And he said, well, if you can figure out a way to save enough money for one year's worth of tuition. So think about that in today's dollars, you know, the average relatively good private school would be, you know, 60, $70,000. Yep. Imagine a kid in four or five years saving 60, $70,000. That's effectively what I did. And so I did that. And so he said, okay, you can go to University of Rochester a private school. You don't have to go to a SUNY State University of New York school. Well, that, taught you, that taught you the value and the and the let's let's say it like this: the value of money and how it flows. Yes. And and you can and when you believe, I talk about belief and desire, uh, which is really important in anything you want to create in your life. Like like this woman, I was just talking to her. And the Money Miracles membership. And she said, well, you know, I want to manifest this, but I, I don't know if I really believe it, but I really desire it. I said, well, what's the number from one to 10 where one is massive doubt and 10 is absolute faith that you know you're going to create it, you're going to manifest it. And she said, oh, it's probably a three. So I said, well, why don't we start with something that you can believe in that is like a seven, eight, nine, or 10. So if you want to manifest a billion dollars, a billion, not a million, a billion, what's your belief level? If it's a one, why don't you start with 10,000 first? Because if your belief is a 10 there, it's taking baby steps on the way, right? So you really, really, really want to manifest a billion. That's your desire. It's a 10, but you have no belief. It's not happening. Throw it away. Forget about it until you can manifest small amounts on the way. And you probably read Todd in my book and, and Jackie about my cotton ball story. So I started with manifesting and I, I read the book, The Secret in 2007, and it talked about this guy who manifested this feather. And so 
I don't know why, but the first thing that popped into my head was cotton balls. That was a baby step. That's a baby step on the way to manifesting millions. So tell us the story. I don't remember reading that story. Maybe I, it was one that I skipped over. So, so tell us the story of the cotton balls. So yeah, so right after I read The Secret and it talked about this guy who day after day, he thought about this feather with all these etchings and carvings in it. And one day, lo and behold, he looked down on the street he was walking and he saw this feather. And so I then thought about cotton balls. So okay. pure <laughs> white cotton balls, okay? Yeah. So Every morning in February of 2008, I woke up, I thought about cotton balls. Every night before I went to sleep, I thought about cotton balls. It got warm enough here in New York in April of 2008 when I started going jogging with my daughters. Actually, I was jogging. They were in a double jogging stroller. They were, they were- Along for the ride. Two, they were two and four at the time. And I was pushing them. I, I, I go around a track around my house a couple of times. I get to this- Park, I'd run up the hill, we'd run to the playground, and then I'd get them out of the double jogging stroller. I'd, I'd push them down the slide, I'd push them on the swings, and then they'd get back into the double jogging stroller and I'd jog home. So it was May 31st, 2008. I get them in the double jogging stroller. We go to the track. I run around the track a couple of times. We go to the park. I run up the hill. I'm getting them. We get to the playground, I'm getting them out of the double jogging stroller. And I looked and I saw all over the park, not one, not two, dozens and dozens of cotton balls all over the park. I'm like, Lauren, pick up the cotton ball. Morgan, pick up the cotton balls. Oh my God, oh my God. And for years after that, I, would ha I had this cotton balls on my desk at, you know, while I was a hedge fund manager and after, to remind me that you can manifest anything when you have belief and desire. Mm. And I had belief and desire. Now, how long did it take for you to start that process to see the cotton balls? It wasn't like the next week, right? So I started thinking about cotton balls in February of 2008, and I manifested them May 31st, 2008. Okay. So it was about three months. And I, I talk about um, not attaching. And we talked a little bit about this in the green room, Todd. So, and most of my life, I would white knuckle it, right? Like I'm managing my hedge fund and I've lost money six days in a row. I got to make money today. My investor is going to get so upset. I got to make money. And then I lose money, mm. right? And then I'd be like, okay, you're a good investor. You don't have to move stuff around. You don't have to take action. Just let go. It's going to happen. You got to make money. And then I'd start making money again. And so it's a really important lesson to learn that you don't have to like. So in April of 2008, to go back to the story, I kind of let go. I said, if it happens, it happens. If not, it's OK. But not like I got it. You know, I'm attaching. I'm really got to I got to find the cotton balls. I got to find the cotton balls. <laughs> and then a few weeks later, not one, not two, dozens and dozens of cotton balls. So I teach my clients not to attach to the result. Okay, you, you want to manifest some amount of money, you, but don't like, I got to have it. You know, that, that, that kind of energy is more about resistance than allowance. That's a lack, that's a lack mindset. And, and what you're doing is just creating more of what you don't have because you're focused on it so much. So detach. detach. Yeah. What you focus on, you get, right? So if you're focused on lack, you're fo focused on, you know. And we do that. Poverty. We do that so subconsciously, right, Joel? I mean, because because we're, we're so intent on creating and manifesting and we get so attached to the outcome yet subconsciously we're creating the outcome we're getting of not having it right and and i think we're taught throughout our lives about taking action like i'm not saying don't take action but it's almost like you you feel like you have to take massive action and i i'll say take inspired action you got to put yourself on the flow right that's you know, that's interesting you brought up the secret because that's the one thing the secret doesn't talk about, you know, right. create the vision and, and, but you got to take action right. to be able to 
put yourself in the flow. And it, so a lot of people took the secret and said, oh, this doesn't work. I sat on the couch all weekend and nothing <laughs> happened. Yeah. So it, you should want to take inspired action, right? So I don't know any billionaires, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, and on and on. They didn't just sit at home all day and, and, and meditate and visualize. They got out into the world and took some action, but they took the inspired action. And, and Mike Dooley, you know, I'm an infinite possibilities trainer certified to teach Mike Dooley's uh, best-selling book, Infinite Possibilities. That is a core chapter of infinite possibilities, taking action. Now he talks about beliefs and he talks about visualizing and so on, but he is really big on taking action and it's inspired action, not the white knuckled action that most people think of when so, they so hear close in a little bit on what in what is exactly inspired action what what how, what's your definition for that it's it's when you you're you feel inspired to do something like it's not like i have to do it but it's almost like you're getting a download like you're getting an idea like oh i should do this like a few years ago, when I started, when I, I was doing one on one coaching, you know, I, I shut down my hedge fund in 2016 and I started kind of coaching one off. And I was doing one on one coaching 2016, 2017. And then 2018, kind of towards the end of 18 or early 19, you know, I, I wrote my first book, Mindful Money Management. And then I had this idea and it, it was just like inspired action. You should do a group course. You know, you should start teaching groups as opposed to teaching one-on-one. So I, I started this group course in, in late 2019. And then later that year, I started thinking, you know, or maybe it was 2020, I started thinking it'd probably be good to have some type of membership service where people can get access to me. And I create videos and create really good content where they can go from wherever they are towards financial freedom as quickly as possible and create all that content. And so that was an inspired idea. Like, I don't, where did it come from? It wasn't like, I gotta do this. It was like, okay, so let's, yeah. The universe, you know, source energy, whatever, you know, so you're, you're connected with your higher self and you're like, oh, you have some idea that, and it's, and so for example, like my books, you know, the last book, Infinite Love and Money I wrote with Molly Singh, and the amount of hours we actually spent writing wasn't a lot. I, I'd say my, my, both my first and second book might have taken 90 days to write. Some will say they took 50 years to write because they were my, his, you know, my career and my experience. Mm -hmm. but, but the writing itself took maybe 90 days. And I will say because it was inspired action, it was like it just flowed. Yeah. from me and it wasn't like oh i like i gotta sit down and write today i wanted to because i wanted to teach the nine money rules to people i wanted to get that information out and so it just flowed through me and it wasn't like i gotta i gotta write today i gotta write today if i had some feeling about some to continue on with one of the rules yeah I'd write. but if i didn't feel inspired to i wouldn't and it, you know, people talk about writer's block. I don't even know what that is. It's just like, <laughs> just well, Joel, you mentioned rules, and and I think what, for at least for me, what triggers like people like me and myself is that there's a certain to do list that we've been taught about making money, and usually on the top of that list is work really hard, right? And then I look around at people. And I'm working really hard and I know someone else is working hard, but their income is triple what my income is. And so I think, well, how much harder do I have to work <laughs> to get what that person has? But what you're, so what you're saying though, is it's not necessarily the hard work that's important, but the same amount of hard work that we're each putting into results in something different. So there's something more than just working hard. It's, I think I've learned a little bit lately that because everything has an energy, including money, there is a certain energy of money, right? And so when you want to manifest money, you have to tap into that energy vibration of money. 
Am I right or am I crazy? No, um, you're, you're absolutely right. In fact, I, I'm, I'm very glad you quoted from my book, which I said, <laughs> money is energy. That's a quote from the nine money rules millionaires use. Money right. is energy. So thank you for quoting from my book. I, yeah, I completely okay. agree with you. And but everything I mean, is energy. So that's why you say, if you're thinking about lack or I need, that's a different type of energy. So that's what you're going to draw in. Absolutely. Right. And, and yeah. so I say, don't work hard to become financially free. Now that it's, it's a little controversial. And I, I say that it's actually in my signature on my email, don't work hard and become financially free. Because like I was saying earlier, when you're in the flow, it's not work, right? It's fun. It's you want to do this, right? When I was working at my hedge fund, I went in every other weekend. I, I'm divorced. So I had my kids every other weekend. But I, if I didn't have my kids, I would go into Manhattan. Why? Because I wanted to. I didn't have to. I wanted to go in on the weekends and find that next great stock idea. It wasn't work to me. It was fun. In fact, in 1992, 1993, 1994, in the early 90s, I was doing this as a hobby. And I said to myself, if I could line my hobby and my career, how much fun would that be? And there I am. You know, it's 2013, 14. I'm commuting into Manhattan to quote unquote what people would say is work. I was I was doing analysis to try to find that next great stock idea so I could make money for my investors and myself. And and it was like it's it's inspired action, it's fun. So that's why I say don't work hard and become financially free. You know, it's have fun and become financially free. But you right? make it a game. That... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just say make it a game. Yeah, I was gonna say you always you've always had that aptitude toward money though, right? Because you started working when you were a young boy to get, earn college or yeah, earn college money. Um, so, but you always haven't always taught the limiting belief idea. You learned about the typical money rules first before you realize some of those rules are just rules. They're not actually things that are going to give us wealth. So where when did you make that? that shift, if you will, from just simply abiding by the money rules. And then, you know, you said the secret, was that, was that the time when you started thinking, oh, okay, it's, it's that secret. Yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. I think most of my life, I kind of felt that there was something else besides like the, the physical reality of the processes. So my book is split up into two parts, right? The the quote unquote, you know, woo woo part or spiritual part, the first six rules. And then the last three, which are process oriented rules, like, you know, is credit good or bad, DIY investing, and, and don't diversify, you know, so those are more process oriented rules. So, but just going back to your first point, you know, saying that I've always had this aptitude, I will tell you, everyone has an aptitude. And, and so like, I'm no better or, you know, to compare other people, like we're all born to thrive. We came here to thrive and then things happen. And then we start getting these beliefs and say, oh, you know, we, I can't do this. You know, in fact, I was out the other night, um, you know, just um, Sunday night, this guy said, you know, I was talking to my financial advisor and I, before we started the conversation, I had to say to him, look, I'm really green. You know, I don't, I don't really understand this stuff. And I'm like, dude, like, like, he's like, talk to me like I'm a kindergartner. I'm like, that's not helpful. Like, stop saying that to yourself. You have amazing intuition. You could be making money just as well as he can. Right. So like those kinds of like, like when, like, and this is 90 plus percent of the world is thinking this way. Oh, I wasn't taught, you know, I don't have an MBA in finance. I'm not a hedge fund manager. I can't do what Joel does. It's not true, hmm. right? We all have the ability. We all have the aptitude. Jackie, you have the aptitude to, to make millions in, in various types of asset classes that, you know, once you're passionate about it, once you're interested in it, it'll work. That's, that's a key part, right, Joel, is the passion. I, the, yeah, you gotta, it's you so what important. You're doing or don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right, it, and I actually talk about this in the book as well. It's like, you know, I, I'm very unusual because like rule number nine is don't diversify. 
no financial planner advisor is going to tell you to don't diversify. They'll tell you to diversify as much as you can. Put a thousand eggs in that basket. Don't put like a handful or just a few. And I'll tell you, well, that's dumbing down your returns, right? And so if you're passionate and interested in just a few stocks, and I know as a former hedge fund manager, my portfolio had to have a diversified portfolio. I had to have 60, 70, 80, 100 stocks. But I'll tell you the top five made 120% of my return. Mm. My top ideas made me 120% of the return and the rest lost me 20%. <laughs> and, mm. and it's, and, but you're required to diversify. So as an individual, you don't have to do that. And so, but yet we, we give our money to a financial planner advisor. They put it into five different mutual funds and they're 5,000 stocks. And then the market goes down 25% and you lose 25%. Well, I didn't lose 25% this year. And I, well, I didn't it's diversify. Been year, it's been kind of a crazy year. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I'm just saying that, I mean, a lot of people I know who I've taught and so on, they're not diversified and they didn't lose 25%. Yeah. And so, but we're taught to diversify. And so you don't want to do, you don't want to take chance. You don't want to take risk. I think taking the risk is being diversified. So Anyway, the point being that you, everyone has passion and interest in something. It might be stocks. It might be a particular industry in the stock market that you're more interested in, or you may be interested in technology or energy companies. You know, for me, it's financial companies. And that's where I'm expert. I feel much comfortable in. I'm not going to start investing in technology companies, but because my interest and passion lies in, in financial companies. But if it's real estate or whatever the, the type of asset is that excites you, interests you, like I want to I wanna learn about housing, I want to invest in houses, like that interests you, then go there. Like you don't need to be in the stock market to become financially free. Fascinating. So let's talk about some of those other ones. We've already talked about a couple. Don't diversify. And intuition, that's one yes. of them. So yes. what? Of those nine, well, let me let me let me ask this question first. Are all millionaires using these nine? Yeah, so it's interesting because it, it's a provocative title. First of all, I talk about I was gonna name the book the unconventional money uh, rules, but I, and I talk about this in the introduction, right? I'm not a rules guy. I'm not a rules guy. So then to write a book called The Nine Money Rules is kind of a non sequitur. It's like, what are you doing? But it's provocative. And yeah. so that's the point is like, I don't believe there needs to be rules. What resonates with you? Yeah. And it does it work. And I'll, I'll do, I say this in my membership all the time. I say, look, I, I have nine different manifesting techniques. Do not do all of them. <laughs> don't do all of them. Like, don't make it work. It's the same thing with the rules. Don't make it work. Like, oh, I, you know, rule number, rule number five is, is gratitude. And that's a powerful one to be grateful for what you have now. I, I do a gratitude journal and I, I write five things I'm grateful for every morning and every night. And I've only been doing this for 10 years, but you know, it's a powerful 10 years. So there's great power in gratitude. Right. So if that one resonates with you, do it. But I'm not saying do all nine. You don't have to do all nine to be a millionaire. And I'm, there are many millionaires and billionaires who are not doing all nine or even seven. Right. So, but, you know, giving is another one that's really powerful. Rule number six, the, the, the title of that chapter is if I give my money away, I have less money. How does that work? So, so drill down on that one just a little bit, because that, that's so, kind of this is where this is where in that chapter I say money is energy, right? And so whatever you put out, you get. So, and it all it also triggers a shift in your subconscious mind by giving. So I tell my like I've had clients who are like you know I I'm barely making it, I paycheck to paycheck. I said give, and like. What are you talking about? I, I, I can't even I pay my, <laughs> right. And I'm like, it doesn't like $5. There's, there's you, most people who I'm, I'm coaching have 
first world problems, not third world problems, mm. right? They're not like, oh my God, where am, what am I gonna eat today? Do I have enough water? You know, so there are people around the world much worse off than you are. You can find a dollar or $5 to give, you know, so start with, even if it's a tiny amount, what you're, sh you're shifting subconsciously that I have some money to spare and share because you're thinking I don't, but you do. Mm -hmm. Right. And, that and creates, so that creates a flow, right, Joel? I mean, that creates the flow. And maybe. so that, you know, putting maybe. the money out there, I say, um, so Sir John Templeton, some of you may have heard of Sir John Templeton. Some say he's the best investor of all time. Sir John started the Templeton funds with about like a few thousand dollars. And he sold Templeton funds to the Franklin funds in the 1990s for a billion dollars. Yep. Mm. He said he hadn't met anybody who didn't give at least 10% of his earnings each year over a 10 year period to charities who didn't have massively more wealth at the end of the 10 years than at the beginning. Yeah, it's a mm. flow. Pay me so I can pay them so they can pay you, right? It's that. And and so a, a lot of people will hoard money and just lock it up, right? And there's no flow and it doesn't grow. Right, right. And that, that's exactly the point, you know? You know so I, in, in the Infinite Love and Money, we created sub seven money personality types. The acronym is Sugar Pie. Sugar Pie for the seven money personality types. So S is for the splurgers, U is for the unconscious ones, G is for the greedy ones, a is for the accumulators, right? So you, you were just talking about kind of accumulators, but there's even more intense than that. There's the protectionists, yeah. the P in pie, and they're hoarding. Like the protectionists are hoarding the money. And you may think, oh, like putting them under the mattress was a great idea in 2022, <laughs> right? But that's really bad because you're hoarding and you're not putting it into the flow and it's not, it can't come back to you. Now I is for investor, E is for egotist. So anyway, there's provocative names and you can do a survey in that book to figure out which one you are. It's pretty cool. Jack, Jackie will never forget that because she's, an, she's the queen of acronyms. Right. Sugar pie. <laughs> she's always coming up with acronyms so she won't forget that one. That's because it helps me remember things. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But every great speech I've heard her deliver had an acronym in it. <clears throat> so what else are we missing, Joel? What else? What so else the first you? one, yeah, we've kind of touched on this already, but the number one rule is when you believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so like we've touched on it a lot, but how do you shift those limiting beliefs to empowering beliefs? So here's a couple of specific ways you can do that. So one we've kind of talked about with Andy Dooley's powerful reframe, stop, cancel, clear, get the fear out of here, or the other F word. But <laughs> another way you can do that is by acting as if. So you're 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 feeling some worry, fear about money. Why don't what about like you have some dreams and desires? You have to go, you have this dream to travel to Egypt. You have a dream to have your, your dream uh, blue convertible Maserati. Or you have a dream, you know, to find your partner. So what could you do now acting as if you already have your partner or your dream car, your dream destination. So you want to go to Egypt. I did this in 2021, in the beginning of 2021. I wanted to go to Egypt. Now I have a vision board with the, the Sphinx and the, the Great Pyramid on it already. And I have my screensaver with the Sphinx and the Great Pyramid on it already. So you can do that right? Vision boards and, and screensavers helpful. But the other thing I did was I started researching. I went online and see to see how much the flights were. And do I have enough frequent flyer miles <laughs> to go business class? And how many more frequent flyer miles would I need? And then I see, is there any way I can fly from a New York area airport where I live to Cairo direct? No, I couldn't not with my frequent flying miles. Okay, so I got to fly through Paris. Okay, is there a layover there? Like, do I really want a layover to which flights? Okay, let's check out the hotels. Oh my God, hotels are really inexpensive in, in Egypt. 
like the dollar is really strong and, and you can get amazing hotels like 25 US dollars. Wow. That's cool. Oh, what are, you know, maybe, you know, what do I, you know, okay, I, I want to go up and down the Nile. Is it possible to do, you know, uh, a, 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 a ride on the, a boat ride on the Nile? You know, how long, like, can you do it? Or, you know, how many days would that, you know, so you, you do all this research, you're getting into the mindset of I'm already there. Right. Um, um, and then, you know, what about the tours? What excursions would I take? Where would I go? What temples would I go to? Can I get to the Sphinx? And then a friend of mine tells me about his trip that she went on and her mentor uh, took her and with, you know, 16 other people and she's doing it again in January of 2022. And these are the dates and this is the this, this is the tour and this is the place you're gonna see. And I get to touch the Sphinx and go inside the Great Pyramid of Giza in January 20th. Well, like the trip I took in 2007. It did exactly the same. <laughs> so so anyway, the point being is acting as if is really powerful and you can do it without spending money. I didn't spend any money on the acting as if to have that manifestation happen. Yep. Right. What so you can test drive your dream car, you know, get dressed up, you know, a little bit nicer if you're going to test drive the Ferrari or the Maserati, <laughs> but you can do that. You know, they're not going to check your, you know, income to do a test drive. You can house, um, you know, go into like how I, I did this years ago in, in Greenwich, Connecticut. You know, there are houses that are worth, you know, 25 million and up. Go to a broker and check them out. Act as if, take pictures, and then make that your vision board. There you go. That doesn't cost yeah. any money, yeah. right? So you can do this stuff acting as if. Very cool. What that's else? A great way to change those beliefs from, oh, I can't afford it. You know, that's too expensive. To, to see the pictures, to go in and actually feel the car, to, you know, actually see the house, see the, see the landscape, see the jacuzzis and the swimming pool. You know, the the four car garage, it's just like, like this person's no better or worse than I am. He's a human being. He's got red and white blood cells just like I do. There's no difference. Mm. So and they own that house. Let's let's Sorry. let's talk a little bit about you. You have some programs coming up. You have a course that you're developing. The landing page isn't up yet, but tell us about that in Tysis. Yeah, so this is basically based on the nine money rules millionaires use. So it's it's an interactive course based on the book. So there are exercises for each chapter, including acting as if, by the way. So that was a little bit of a tease. Yeah. And so you can, so with each rule, there's a specific exercise to do to create that type of rule for you. Now, um, I'm not saying, again, do all of them, but it's good to be exposed to all of them to see how they can help you become the millionaire plus that you want to be. So this course is only $47. Wow. So it's, a, and it's one time and you'll get, you know, so it's like, you're getting all the benefit of almost like I'm teaching you. So you get the exercises, do the exercises, and, and then I, by the way, I give everyone 30 minutes free of prosperity coaching. So I'd recommend people do the course and then reach out to me with any questions from the course for the 30 minutes. It's, I mean, I, I think that alone can create massive abundance in your life. And if you like, and completely money back guarantee, if you don't get, if you don't can create $50 from this course, let me know. I'll give you your money back. <laughs> and that will be up on your website and jackie and i have a link to your website on yes. today's show page at www.lifemasteryradio.net yeah so my website is salor more uh s-a-l-a-u-r-m-o-r you see in the back of me so yeah as jackie said is my company's named after my daughters uh, i don't know if you can see that Great. lauren and morgan nice Sal Laura Moore, like it Oh my gosh, goodness, my friends, we only have about five minutes left. This hour just blew blood. Joel, you are, I hope you'll come back on the show because I think there's a heck of a lot more to talk about. There's there is. Stuff. 
I'd love to go into manifesting techniques specifically um, because, you know, and then talk about visualizing because visualizing, we talked about a little bit, that was but my there is a, question to you. <laughs> there's, a, there's a specific way to visualize and people aren't doing it right. If they were, they would be financially free. Give us, give us a quick crash course on visualization. So here's one really important thing that people aren't doing is they're not doing it consistently. Five minutes a day, that's all you need. And the other important thing they're not doing is, is thinking beyond the event. So you want to manifest your dream house. That house with the 10 bedrooms, six baths, indoor, outdoor, uh, swimming pool with the four jacuzzis and four car garage and the, the, the tennis courts and the bowling alley and the movie theater and 22 acres of land. So why not think about in your visualization having the housewarming party? That's what you visualize. Of 250 of your closest friends and you're giving the speech and they are so grateful that you're there because you've helped them to become financially free, right? And they're so grateful for you and you're so grateful for them. And it's just such a, you know, a love fest. And, and you're speaking, you're giving the speech. So that's what you visualize beyond the event. You already have the home. It's already there. You've already done, you've already purchased it. But now it's beyond the event and you're you're doing the housewarming party. Wow. Yeah, that's much more powerful than just thinking, oh well, when I'm gonna have a house in the Caribbean. <laughs> but actually seeing yourself there, sitting on the beach, you know, whatever. Um, and you mentioned vision boards. So the is there besides a vision board and in visualizing your head, is there any other way that makes it easy to really think about these things or are there words that we say to ourselves as we're thinking about these things yeah i mean i i do i i actually have set time for visualization and set time for affirmation separately mm. so and the other thing i would say though is when you're visualizing and you get the monkey mind like i do so yeah. you're three minutes in to your five minutes and you start thinking about your day and how you're going to be on Life Mastery Radio and you're so excited and you're like, this is going to be an awesome day. And But but wait, I'm supposed to be visualizing, right? <laughs> so it's okay to say, you know what? I'll, I'm going to do this tomorrow. You know, give yourself a break. It's not like white knuckling again. It's like everything in flow. And if your monkey mind, you know, starts really going, you just say, okay, I'm done. I'll, I'll get to this mm -hmm. tomorrow. Okay. Jackie, I got to say, book him, Jackie. Get him back on the show. We got to have him back because I think we could have done a two-hour show today, I think, but we'll, we'll, Jackie, book him. Book him again. I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jackie, that's, any, any takeaways? You know, I, I'm sitting here just blown away watching you and, and just thinking, wow, this, this woman has really grown over the last couple of years. The questions that you're asking are just like, who is this lady? Yeah, I know. I've learned a lot. We've had some wonderful guests, right? All of our guests have been wonderful, but I've learned a lot from each and every one of them. Joel is no exception. And just your own journey, too. I wouldn't say sure. it's just the show. I mean, you sure. take off and, and check things out and research them, and it's just really cool. Go to retreats and programs, and yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I'm taking away a lot, and I appreciate, Joel, the wisdom that you provide because... I know there's a lot of people like me that was just money is just this, 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 and this. And if you can't do that, that, and that, you're not going to be wealthy, but you're saying there's so much more to that. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you for showing up as you. That's, that's pretty cool. All of the links that we talked about today are on today's show page at www.lifemasterradio.net. Check out Jackie's book, check out my book, sign up for the newsletter. Check and lastly, <laughs> Please, please, please make it a great day because it is all about choice. That's all the time we have for today. Bye-bye for now. Bye, everybody. 
Thank you for tuning in to Life Mastery Radio. Join Todd Allen and Jackie Bailey and their guests of leading authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs weekly at 10 a.m. Pacific. Learn to live a peaceful life with intentional mastery through stories and messages to support your well-being and most evocative dreams. Visit their website, www.lifemasteryradio.com. Join their mailing list and be notified about upcoming guests. That's lifemasteryradio.com.